I compiled every Guild Wars 2 Raid and Strike boss into a tier list and ranked them all live with some of my friends. Join myself, Cal, Virgil, Gix, the founder of the XL Raid Training Group, and Shiloh and Chat as we determine what the best and worst bosses in Guild Wars 2 are. If you enjoy, consider dropping a like or subscribing, and let me know if you'd like to see us add fractal bosses to this list next. Also, feel free to give me your hot takes on these bosses in the comments below. Now, on to the video. So uh, to get everyone on the same page for our tiers here, SAB, obviously, that's just higher ranks of good. C is our complete nothing fights. We'll go ahead and just to demonstrate. Ice Brood Construct, I have no emotion towards this fight. This means literally nothing to me, C tier. If you actively yeah, do not like it, D tier. If it is objectively the worst thing ever, F tier. There we go. I'm pretty sure most people could solo Ice Brood Construct in open world gear. Probably. Probably. I mean, he has a few attacks that do do an actual decent little chunk of damage, but those are all dodgeable, you know? Yeah, like, hit your dodge button, you'll be fine. What are our opinions on the Veil Guardian? Okay, so, quick, uh, quick disclaimer here. Are we including the pre-event with his three phases? Um, only, only consider bosses themselves. Even with, okay. like, the naming, like, I called Verenia Verenia instead of Cold War, just to clarify, we're only talking about the boss itself, no pre-events or anything like that. I, I would I'm say... I'm gonna put him at a B, to be honest. I would say, like, once you've gotten into the swing of raiding, I would definitely say it's also a B, but, like, starting out, it's a pretty stellar yeah. introductory fight. I I would make an argument for either high B or low A for Veil vale Guardian, just because I think it does a very, very good job of being the tutorial raid. It introduces you to not only a bunch of mechanics that will be used over and over in different raid stuff, like, uh, it introduces you to toughness tanking, it introduces you to greens and... The same teleport and that's used in Cairn and stuff like that. And then it also introduces you, like you said, to very basic game mechanics like Condi versus Power or, uh, or, CC, or Boon healing, Rip for the one win. guy. Stuff like that. I think he does a very good job of just being introducing players to end game content. Veil vale Guardian, I think, does not deserve to be A or S because it does force you to bring Condi DPS. And if you are a new player getting into raiding and you and all of your friends are power DPS, that means that you're getting kicked from the group so that you can find Condi DPS. That is true. And I know for all of us, yeah, I know for all of us that have done this for a while, it's like, oh, okay, uh, we can just switch to our Condi characters. But like, if you're new, first off, you probably don't know about tone boosting to 80. So you're probably like, oh, I have to drop another $20 if I want to boost something to 80 or it'll take me like a week to get back up here. Mm. And you probably don't have another character fully geared. And being fully geared is not super important, but if you're new, you think it is. So I, yeah. that's why I think it belongs in B. So my only problem with making him A over B, because I like that he's very, he makes things interesting and he changes, you know, and he changes at the time that it tends to change to 66 and 33, but he doesn't really have a backstory. Ah, not not just looking at and it from I the fight no... standpoint, from the, also the lore standpoint. From the lore standpoint, he who has the hell no is this guy? And he doesn't say a thing. You're, so you're saying he's the perfect man because not only is he shrouded in mystery, but he's willing to change <laughs> for you. <laughs> well, moving from one they them to the next, here we have another entity that is made up of a bunch of spirits put together. I think. Yes. F -tier. Tongue Daddy is S tier. You're going to give Dorsal an S? Yes. Yeah. Tongue Daddy is S tier. Are My you gonna like... is very confused. No, there is no explanation for that. You no explanation? No, no explanation needed. Okay, so from a training standpoint, I would say S because it's super easy to train. But from, I would also say B, but like lower than Veil vale Guardian if I had to judge the fight independently on its mechanics. Because yeah. it's literally just smacking this dude's ass the entire fight, and then you have to kill spirits, and then you go back to smacking his butt, and there there there's orbs, but like 
if you have one or two people with epidemic, then you just solve that yeah. problem immediately. I the th and the kind of the thing with Gorseful is that he has these extra mechanics, but your goal is to either is to ignore them as much as possible. The extra mechanics just don't do anything if you have like one or two people. Like it doesn't even have to be everyone's prepared for this fight. Like one scourge DPS can take out the orbs for the entire fight. Yeah. You 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 either ignore it or it completely fucks you because you either have one guy who can take care of it or you're a new group you don't have anyone prepared for it and you just get completely fucked by orbs and they're really annoying. <laughs> I would say it's right below Veil Guardian personally. Uh, obviously, Cal says it's an S, so I would love for her <laughs> to. I would say it's an S mostly only because I can find Rule Thirty Four of it. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Mostly because I, I just looked it up just to double check and make sure. I, I did not when know. I, think about it, I did not know that was criteria for this. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because, because, like, because, <laughs> frankly, Nothing like, Anka, around me would be safe in front of you. If that, if that case, like, like, Anka needs her own tier. If that, yeah. Taken into account. My husband just turned around when I said the rule thirty four thing. And he goes, "I don't have anything around me to throw at you." I'm like... <laughs> Even oh, poor, yeah. poor, I have no idea how to say your name, I'm sorry, uh, Shiloe? They hop, they hopped into oh. chat, and first thing they hear is Rule 34. Yeah, it's Shiloh. Shiloh? Okay. <laughs> so, I, I'm, I'm still voting for right below Veil Guardian. And... I do think, I generally really do not like DPS checks as mechanic, I think that is objectively the lamest thing to design in any fight. But I yeah. think the optional DPS check in Corsival is kind of sick. The fact that you can ignore the mechanic if you are you have good damage, that's pretty cool. But... I do not think that was intended. Yeah. And it also has the side effect of, well, now the fight is just stand there and beat him up. So, double-edged sword once again. So, my hot take. Probably one of, like, maybe like two or three I'm going to have on this entire tier list is I would put Sabatha at S tier. I I also generally agree. Yes. I love Sabatha. Yes. For Sabatha. All of her mechanics are very clearly defined. You have to learn them before you can even get to her boss uh, arena. Mm -hmm. It's going to wipe you if you're new. It's going to wipe you quite a lot, but it's a repeatable pattern that only has two iterations. It's the same every time. She requires a single C uh, CC check throughout the entire fight. So usually people will have enough CC on their bars, even if they don't bring dedicated CC skills. They just need to know how to do CC. And she requires a lot of positioning, and she requires a lot of communication. But otherwise, there's no real unfair, like we just took a million damage because we got unlucky. There's no, uh, there's very few times where you'll ever get an extremely unlucky wall that you can't recover from, um, as long as everyone's paying attention. I think it's just a very strong fight. All right, Slothosaur is next. Slothosaur, so... hot take. I feel like we're gonna get some very mixed opinions here. I love Slothosaur. It's one of my oh, favorite I fights. Him. I hate him. Get I feel him. like Slothosaur is a very strong A oh, contender. Yeah. I feel like there's a few mechanics in that fight that are just not well explained. Like the slublings. It, imagine picking up a slubling and then you get away from the group. Your group doesn't know that they're going to kill you. So you have like seven HP and you end up going to the middle of the room and then you see the next mushroom and it's like 20 feet away. So then you're like, oh, okay, I'll pick that one up. And you try to pick it up and it like, I don't, I think it kills you if you've already had a mushroom or you just like can't pick it up. I cannot imagine how confusing Slothosaur was to figure out originally. That does seem... Yeah, looking at it, it does seem it'd be very torturous without a trainer. But, as someone who already knows all of the things, I just think it's kind of neat. Yeah, that's why I'd say A. Like, it's a very fun fight, but like, if you're new, it's gonna absolutely just put you through a blunder until you either give up or you look up a guide. I mostly hate it, uh, just because when I have run with people, especially people who don't know what they're doing, it takes forever. I was just gonna say, can we talk about the beautiful design decision to put a raid, potentially raid wiping mechanic, the poison, uh, as a neon green skull in a neon green room with green walls? 
So I'm a, I mean, I'm at a, least it gives you a warning player. in red <laughs> when you get yes. it. <laughs> Someone who knows color theory, devs definitely gonna kill you with that poison. Yeah, absolutely. And like, so Shiloh, I've done Slothosaur probably a hundred times. And to this day, I still just have random poisons popping up. And it's not because it's a bug. It's because there was a green skull and I was not fixated on that person. So I did not see the green skull above their head because it blends in with everything else. So I included all of the raid CMs as separate entries, and I also included in that the pseudo CMs, in this case, the Golden Slubling. I would say put it right in front, like higher than the original Slothosaur, and my reasoning for that is it is literally just Slothosaur, but like with like a 1990s sitcom style laugh track going on the entire time as two <laughs> people try to struggle to get the slubbling back and forth. I just I just hear like wacky cartoon sound effects as people fall down, like the slipping, the bonking, just like people are trying to get the slubbling to sl like live the entire fight. It's just Slothosaur, but with like comic relief added in. <laughs> Next up, we've got the Bandit Trio. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> It's a gigantic waste of time, is what it is. I, I, I would put it in the guy right there. I was about to say. <laughs> and, uh, honestly, I'm going to talk about Bandit Trio and Bandit Trio CM together. Um, I think Bandit Trio is a waste of time. I think you literally just need to tell... It's literally just running in a circle around a room with two people occasionally showing off that they have one crowd control ability on their bar. And, <laughs> and Bandit Trio CM is literally the same fight and if but you're DPS, slightly or... slower it's there's just so much waiting time part part of the issue is that the first two phases are so easy right other than the cage getting hit you will never ever wipe to berg you will never wipe to zane you have to wait for like two minutes between each of them and then sometimes you just wipe to norella for no reason it's very irritating and sometimes there is like an actual design bug with zane where he can try to teleport to the person who's jumping away to do mortars. And if it happens, you might wipe and there's nothing you can do about it. Get lucky next time. I, I feel like this is like the laziest fight they've ever made. It's like sometimes pocket raptors will just randomly aggro on bandit ads as they're coming in. And you'll just have like a bunch of ads delayed because like half of them died killing pocket raptors. <laughs> oh, that was Shiloh asking. Yeah, it is the just don't use the extra things for the CM. So uh, I would... I'm going to put it just behind the normal one, because it's just the same thing, but a little more annoying. So next so, up, Matty Boy. Uh, I would say Matthias is probably a B for me. Ooh. Probably right, uh, a, I'd say right below Gorsival, because he only has two attacks, and one of them is useless. And the other one just gimps people for no reason, like he just straight up kills people. Uh, because it does like a hundred percent of your HP, and other than that, you need to have somebody with a reflect, which is not immediately apparent. So you need to be changing people's bars, which is I actually like. I think that's a plus. I think adding things like that to raids is a plus because yeah. it's something to figure out. Same, same thing as what I pointed out with Veil vale Guardian. I do like when the game forces you to actually use player side mechanics. Yeah, the only couple of gripes I have with Matthias are. The small skulls that you need to put in the fountain and the big skulls, if you aren't looking at your hotbar and you don't know that they only happen during fire phase, I don't know why they would pick two separate skull icons for different, like, wildly different mechanics. Because, like, if you try to bring a small skull to the wall, you're just going to die. And if you try to bring a big <laughs> skull to the fountain, you're going to just sabotage whoever needs to use it. Yeah. I, I always tell people when I'm doing training, don't look at the skull at all. Just check if you have a special action key or not. My, my hot take, I, I really like Matthias. For a lot of the I, same reasons, I like Slothosaur. Because they are really similar fights, especially if you do square dance. For Matthias? How do you I, feel about Matty Boy? I haven't done the CM. I haven't done the CM, personally. It's literally Here's just you can't use food. It's literally you can't use food. That's that's it. It, it is it is <laughs> Matthias it. without food. That is it. That's kind of boring, first off. Yeah. But I do like the main fight. 
Uh, I am unfortunately <laughs> not looking at rule 34. That's the first thing. Uh, second thing is needing a reflect then makes it mean you have to bring a certain class, which also I'm not particularly the biggest fan of. Uh, doesn't Wizard's Does Tower Relic give you a reflective barrier for like two seconds? Does it? I have no uh, idea. You're talking Arena of the Wizard Tower? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it gives you a barrier, yeah. Re projectile reflect, yes. Okay. <laughs> so I guess everyone can just take Wizard Tower. There you go. Just alternate. <laughs> just That's how you do tower. it. That's it. That's the end of it. That's the new... Of the tower gives you reflect, did you say? Yeah. It gives it to you for like two seconds. It's like... Honestly, really, really okay. Bad. New meme run. We gotta go in. No real reflects. Only use Wizard's Tower. Yeah, just only Wizard's Tower on each other. Like every single character. Is it like a, um, a dome around you for two it's seconds? It's a it's a three second PVE shield that reflects projectiles, according to the wiki at the moment. Is anyway. it when you use your elite skill or when is it? Um, it's when you use, use your elite. elite yeah, I, I'm willing to compromise with Cal and stick normal with Matthias and neutral. To reiterate, neutral is for I have zero opinion on this fight. So, oh well, maybe then B. Yeah, I would say bottom of B. Bottom of yeah. B. My boy's going so low. I love my boy so I much. I can't say he won't be the lowest on that. Me, myself, I would have put probably Matthias high to mid A, but this is a democracy, unfortunately. So, McLeod, everyone's favorite uh, boss. Don't we love McLeod? I would say, I would say hard F. Um, hard F. I'm just talking about the boss. Because, just the boss. Yeah, it could take you up to like 15 minutes to get to him. And then if people don't know to watch for wargs, or if people pull Glenna to the group, which has been a mechanic throughout this entire run up until this point, Glenna can just get absolutely annihilated in like one second, and then you have to restart the entire encounter. <laughs> and then once you know what to do... Once you know what you to know do, to it's baby stairs, easy. I think the funniest thing about McLeod is that he mainly serves the purpose of teaching us the color mechanic for Keep Construct but nobody does the color mechanic on Keep Construct, so it doesn't matter. Like, the, the, orbs. the orbs, but there's also the ads that pop in that have the colors, and people just ignore them. It doesn't... Nobody cares. Yeah, McLeod's enough. I don't know if we need to keep talking about McLeod. <laughs> I don't think everything you just said, except I wouldn't put it in F, I'd put it in C tier. Just because I don't... It's mostly, like, it's not... I don't, I don't hate it, but I don't like it either. If there was no warg, I would say C tier. But they exempt her from the death mechanic, which means that you are actively punished for doing the mechanic you've done 15 minutes up until now. Not only that, but if you miss a warg, you just yeah. wipe and you have to reset. They, they should the at least run. just like have the special action key disappear during the cloud so you can't pull her up to the gate. Yeah, or like put a checkpoint before the boss even. Like something like that. I'm gonna put keep construct like right above Gorsival. Because it is literally just Gorsival with, like, added mechanics. It's just a Unga Bunga DPS golem that you need to position correctly for. And it has that orb thing, which some people dislike, but I like the orb thing. I like there's, the there's orbs. There's a couple of ways you can make it easy. I think it's neat and unique and interesting, and it also prepares you for when the thing happens in Zera. I like uh, on release when uh, Bladesworns could crit for, like, a million on him. <laughs> I, I would say More keep meals. construct and keep construct CM. For those who don't know, keep construct CM is literally the same fight. You just lose like three feet on the edge of the arena. I'd put them right above Gorsival, and I would put keep construct normal mode first. I'm yeah. gonna agree there. I'm a I'm a big fan of keep construct. I like doing it, but I can I can see the argument for B tier when just looking at its uh, mechanics objectively. Zara. I have hey. very mixed feelings. <laughs> I love that fight. I absolutely adore it. I think it'd be. A I here. love it. <laughs> I love Zara as a fight. Uh, tanking it is a nightmare unless you've done it multiple times before, and training it is a nightmare uh, mm. because if people are not paying attention, they're just gone due to stacks. Training it is a shit show. I would say a below Slothosaur if we're. Judging it by the fight objectively, I would put uh, it above Slothosaur for the fight. I, I but think training it's very. It, I would put below. 
I think it is very funny that it broadcasts to the entire raid who gets the special action key, so you know who to blame if you die. <laughs> Right, so Zara A tier below Sloth, I think we agreed on. Yeah. Uh Karn is gonna be an F for me. Ooh. It's you don't do anything. You have like one dude <laughs> healing reds and everyone else just stands under the boss. If you don't need to do hearts, it is literally a DPS golem. Like you do not need to do anything other than have like one person move away from the group for a minute every twenty seconds. Yeah, I don't particularly mind karen but he he, he does kind of just end up being a golem all right so why don't we split the difference and so cow what would you say if, like if you had to give him a, a letter i would probably end up putting him in c because i don't know he's kind of just there so why don't we just stick him at the bottom of d or yeah bottom of d yeah bottom of d he's getting what he wants anyway <laughs> all right then how do we feel about the cm Spoiler alert, put, not a fan. I would put it below Karn on D. <laughs> because it's just the same fight over again. But more annoying. Time. The group I normally do it with has a lot of trouble with Karen CM for some reason. And I don't know why. Because it's just so unnatural really? to do the the mechanic it wants you to do. I have no It's problem like, yeah, you it. do this I, thing I, every I, I, couple seconds that you don't need to do. And just don't I forget it. If you bind your special action to an easily accessible key that you can just double tap, then well, it becomes really easy. Yeah, obviously I have it on a good key, but it's like, you know, it, it's just inherently unnatural to use a skill when you don't need to, just because the game will punish you otherwise. Yeah, I get what you're saying. It, it'd be like, what if, what if there was a fight that's like, okay, use your five skill every 10 seconds or you die. That's, that's so weird. That's dumb, huh? Yeah, I, I don't like Karn CM at all. <laughs> Speaking of things that Gix does not like, yeah, next up, we have me. Mursat Overseer. I I despise everything Mursat stands for. He does think in Gollum even more so than Karn is, and that I would have to put him in F. He's I... a tanking Gollum, but it wipes the raid if your raid doesn't kill one ad. I really, I really like Emma because he himself like is a golem, but the the point is all the other stuff going on. I really like the mechanics of moving around, clearing the board with the spikes and the fire and that. I think that's very fun. The spikes are fun because if you mess up and you're in it and then you're insta dead. I, I'm clearly biased about this fight. I, uh, I, I despise this boss with a fiery passion. So I, I'm just going to sit out of the ranking this time because obviously <laughs> I'm just going to give it like <laughs> the lowest F possible every single time. CM I would put at the lowest B because if you are an experienced raider, it at least adds challenge to the fight. And that extra mechanic actually makes it into a fight. I like the challenge mode of your annoying if the blue doesn't line up, but otherwise I actually enjoy it. Yeah, uh, I... I... I've only done it, I think, once or twice, but I quite like the CM for Mursat. I would put it at B for CM and D for normal. Wow, you put it at D for normal? Yeah, I'm with... I, yeah. yeah I, I agree. I think that's Maybe objectively a good bias. one. I would also I probably would put it at D or even A. <laughs> I really like it, though. So so we, we all agreed A or B, so I'll just throw it at top of B for CM. What, what is our collective decision on normal mode? Either D or he's neutral, because he's just kind of there. And he's really easy to deal with outside of Dispel with a Necromancer and Evie, just like with uh, Gorsable. I, I would say if I did not hate him, like with a fiery passion, I would put him right above Karn. Right above Karn. I definitely like it more than Karn. Okay. I like him a good bit. We'll, we'll throw him in neutral. Well, we got Samurag up next. Sammy. I love him so much. Th this is another fight. case where Sam Sammy is a very, very simple fight, but I think it works. It's just it's just fun. I like to jump over the shockwave. I like to dodge under the sweep. It requires players to do different things. They have to actually do knockbacks. They have to fear. They have to mow Brigham. 
Uh, He's always been my favorite boss to fight. I know multiple people that want Samurog to rearrange their guts. So there's something <laughs> there too. Now that one, that's another one that there's definitely rule 34 out there. So there's that. Me Give too? <laughs> no, you said me too. Don't go, oh. You said me too. You're not taking that back. I, I would put, I would put Samurog right below Zara. Like right, right below Zara. On, on I, I would definitely put him a I'm I'm almost thinking low S. It is a very simple fight, but I just think he's very good fun. And if you get hit by him throwing things around, then you end up flying backwards and you die instantly. And he it's so awesome. Boy. But Zara's also a good girl, even though she makes me want to tear my hair out when I train her. <laughs> Samurog CM. On the other hand, is going to wild. It's going to wildly vary. I have, on your... I, done it. How, I have only done it once, and we did not clear it. And I could not tell you a single thing about it. Which one, Samurai? Samurai yeah. CM. I have only done it once as well. Well, I've done it twice, and both times. Interestingly enough, I was part of an XL training group that did all the CMs of that wing, and Samurai was the only one that we were able to, to actually beat. We, I, we I had the exact Sears. opposite. We lost Temer Sato over Sears, but we beat Samurog somehow. I thought that was really funny. So Samurog is wild because there's a couple of ways to do it. You could either like look up a guide and look up all the spear placings and plan accordingly and watch like a Snow Crows video, or you can just like run in a circle. So Samurog, you cannot kill the spears in the CM, and there's like ten times as many. Uh, so that's where the challenge comes from. And usually you just have a bunch of people just like spewing out stability. So I would say I would put Samurog right below normal mode Samurog just because it is difficult enough. It can make people miserable and it, it, it you have to bring very specific builds for it too, unless your group is really good. But it is also an incredibly fun fight if you have the group for it. If you do not have the group for it, it will be the most miserable experience you ever do. Like, Are we talking about Deimos now? Oh, no, Samrog. Deimos? Because you could say the exact same thing about Deimos. To be honest. <laughs> you, so, need the, you need the very particular group. So for anyone who knows me and knows how much I like running Wing 4 and also has looked at where I have put all of the other Wing 4 bosses on this, you will probably guess that I think Deimos is S tier. I think he mm. is right below Sabatha. And let me finish. This is, I know that this is a really weird thing for me to say. He, he has multiple ways you can fight him. You can do it normally. You can do range strat. You can actually uh, do this strategy where you run him in a big square in the middle of the room, which is usually the CM strat. So you can kind of approach it however you want as a group. Not only that, but his mechanics are very, very clear. And the only one that isn't clear is really oil. And oil, you will figure out pretty fast. You'll, after you, you hit it once, and then you know. You know forever. Okay. So people are saying it in chat. I'm just going to give my opinion on the CM now as well. I think CM is better than Sabatha. I, because CM, it doesn't actually require that much of a party setup. You just need a couple of people that can give Aegis. Which can be Catalysts. It can be Guardians. Uh, I believe Mech has a way to give aoe agus or it, you agus. need people to bring blocks other than that it is just normal deimos but with all of the handicaps removed so once you get good at normal mode deimos you have to do big boy deimos which not only requires you to do all of the mechanics but you don't get like the bonus damage from saul you don't get the mm. heals from uh, the hands you have to actually protect saul which is super thematic and i think it's super cool it's also probably one of the most rewarding things to first clear other than like Harvest Temple CM because of how thematic the fight becomes and because how intense the mechanics are. And if you clear Demo CM, like you, you clear Demo CM, like that's kind of a big <laughs> deal for a lot of people. So, so I'm hearing bop, bop. I need you to understand, I enjoy Deimos, but you know what I really, really like? Don't say Rule 34. Teaching Deimos. Okay. It really makes people look at what they have. I'll be like, let's check this. Let's check that. 
And then some people will be like, I don't have that. And I'll be like, well, guess what? Unless you got another weapon, you want to do ranged. Uh, you want to go do an oil kite? And they'll be like, okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but sure. And pushing people out of their comfort zone just enough for them to try something new is, I think, a huge step, especially in raiding. You could say and the same really about love this or eating, eating mushrooms as well. So, like, in the case where someone goes down, then anyone who's on the ball can just get, can basically take over if they know what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's a little bit more detrimental with Deimos, though. Because it's such a big fight and there's so many mechanics. Yeah, it's it's kind of a different reaction. I mean, that's it. In in demos, if your oil kite dies, it's holy shit, we are going to die right now. Somebody get it. Whereas with Slothosaur, if your mushroom guy dies, it's more of the creeping building horror. It's oh no, what are we gonna do when we get to that I mushroom? Like, I like that. I, I like that analogy. <laughs> Like one of your one of your slubs goes down in uh, sloth. You're just like, okay, Spooge Master sixty nine. You're now Square Mushroom. Problem solved. I'll go ahead and end this video here, since we're already running well over thirty minutes. Keep an eye out for the next installment where we'll discuss the Path of Fire raid bosses. Until next time.